forever. We're going this way forever. You follow me on that one? That's what I just said. Okay? If you're going this way on the x-axis, your function is doing one of two things. Going this way forever, or going this way forever. That's what this says. The limit of a polynomial as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity goes to positive or negative infinity itself. I'll give you some examples of this. By the way, you're going to notice that I always use positive and negative infinity. That's something I do because I don't like to get confused. I, I, if I say positive, I, I write the positive. That's just the way I do it. Do you have to do it that way? No, not necessarily. But it helps. Helps me. Helps me. Let's, get, let's consider this, okay? <coughs> now, infinity is not something we can actually plug in. But it's something we can think about. In fact, this one guy actually went crazy thinking about the sizes of infinity because there's different sizes of infinity, which is pretty interesting in itself. But, so thinking about infinity is kind of weird to think about, uh, but we can do it. Think about this. Take a big positive number, plug it in x cubed. You know the shape of x cubed, right? It's a polynomial. It's going to be like this. Take a positive number and plug it in. Do you get a positive or negative? Take a bigger number. Is it still positive? Yeah. Take a bigger number. Is it still positive? In fact, it's getting bigger and bigger. This is going to go to positive infinity. <clears throat> the bigger the positive number I plug in, the bigger the positive number I get out. Let's try this one. <coughs> negative infinity. Take a negative number, plug it in. What do you get? <laughs> Take a smaller negative number, even more negative, plug it in. Do you still get negative? Do you see that this one's actually going to negative infinity? Further we go left on the number line, the further we go down on the y-axis, negative infinity. And that's what that says. The further you go left, the further your function drops. That's what that's saying. Does that make sense to you? How about this one, x squared? Take a positive number, plug it in x squared. Where are you going, up or down? Up, uh, positive infinity. So the bigger the positive number, the bigger the positive number. Try that one though. Take a negative number, plug it in. What do you get? Aha, uh -huh, a positive. Because x squared takes that number and it makes it positive. So even though we're going to the left, our function is going up. That's why x squared looks like that, right? It's going to go up on both sides. This is also positive infinity. Show of hands, how many people feel okay with our, our limit idea so far? Good, all right, all right. By the way, this is kind of an interesting little note. Also, did you know, did you know that the behavior of the polynomial itself will follow the behavior of the leading term? Did you know that? I'll explain that in a second. Sorry, I'll say it this way. Limits of a polynomial will follow the behavior of the highest, highest power of term. No, the polynomial, nothing else, polynomial. One quick example because I, I think you'll really handle this pretty well.
Let's say that I want to talk about the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 9. <coughs> now, <coughs> here's what you can't do. What you can't do is go, oh, let's see. Uh, negative infinity cubed, negative infinity times negative, that's positive infinity, minus a positive infinity, that's, oh man, I don't know. If you start doing stuff like that, subtracting infinities, that is going to make you go crazy. <laughs> what you need to understand is that all this subtracting and adding the infinities are meaningless. The behavior of this polynomial is going to follow the term that has the largest power. The term that has the largest power is usually in front, it doesn't have to be, but it's usually in front of your polynomial. It's this one. Here's what this little corollary says, what this actual theorem says. It says this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches negative infinity of just the negative 3x cubed. Don't forget the negative, that's important. But the negative 3x cubed. You know this intuitively. In fact, when you think about it, look at that. The power is 3. Don't you automatically know it's going to be s-curve? For sure it's going to be doing this. A power 4 would look like this. 5, 6. Hey, you know that, right? Now, negatives would be opposite. So, negative x cubed. Negative of that, dude, right? No, I'm going to go with Nancy. Uh, <laughs> negative x cubed, negative x to the fourth, negative x to the fifth. Negative x to the fifth. It's going to do that, right? You know that intuitively. So it follows that leading term. All the rest of this is garbage as far as the limit is concerned, really, when you're talking about infinity. Now, normal limits, no, it's not garbage, but for infinity, that's the one that matters. So consider the, the leading term, that negative 3x to the third. Take, we're going to negative infinity, mind you. Take and do this. Negative means negative, right? It means a negative number. Take a negative number, plug it in here. What do you get up? And then multiply it by negative 3. What do you get, a positive or negative? Positive. That's positive. So as we're approaching negative infinity, that approaches positive infinity. It's a polynomial. We'll go to 1 infinity. Let me do this one more time so you really catch this on. You're talking about going to really negative numbers, right? Really negative. Plug in negative numbers to that, you're going to get out negative numbers, right? But then you're multiplying it by negative 3, which makes them positive numbers. That's positive infinity. Think about negative x cubed. If you think about negative x cubed, it looks like this, doesn't it? About like that. Let's see if we move my arms a little bit there. There. It looks about like that. Like right? Doing dance dance revolution or something. Uh, it, it's this. As you go left, it goes higher, doesn't it? As you go right, it goes low. That's what this is saying. That's what that's saying. How many people feel okay with that one? I'm not trying to show limits here, but just ask. okay. Now we're going to start using these ideas to actually compute some limits. This is where kind of the fun comes in. We're back to computing limits. Are they hard? No, not really. But you need to know, not tricks, but some mathematical manipulations to do them correctly. There's going to be a lot of rationalization, a lot of that. There's going to be a lot of dividing by things. There's a lot of that. Not hard, though. You just got to see it a few times. see if we can do that. What about that? Uh, where are we going? <coughs> positive infinity. Big, really big numbers. So plug in positive. What's 5 times positive infinity? Positive. Infinity. Positive, right? Minus 2. Positive. Infinity. <laughs> what's 3 times infinity? Positive. Plus 9. Positive. We got you infinity plus 1. 
Let's still... What? <laughs> infinity over infinity. What? Yes? No? No, you can't do that. Do you know how big infinity is? Me neither. So how are you supposed to divide it and get one? You can't, you can't do that. But maybe we can manipulate this in such a way that this stuff is possible. Now here's the idea. Did you know that you can multiply both the top and the bottom of a fraction by anything that you want? Sure. And if you multiply both the top and the bottom of the fraction by anything you want, it goes to both of those terms, true? What that says is this. What if I divided every term by x? Could I do it? Mathematically, is that legal? Sure. Mathematically, that's fine. Five x minus two, three x plus nine. Let's divide all those terms by x. I'll explain where I'm getting the x from in just a minute. Now, some of you can probably see it. I'll explain why in a bit. You okay with that so far? Be sure. Okay. Now, simplify. What happens here? Same thing happens here, right? Do they cancel out or cross out here? So I get the limit This becomes 5 minus 2 over x, 3 plus 9 over x. By a show of hands, how many people can follow that algebra down? Now, watch. Let's take x to infinity. If I take x to infinity, what happens to the 5? It's good. Nothing. Nothing. There's no x. It doesn't change at all. The 5 is 5. What happens to the 3? Nothing. What happens to 2 over x? It's really small. Really small. How small? Zero. Zero. Remember the definition of our limit? Our limit said, as we take x approaches infinity, a constant over x is the first thing I gave you today, really, the first new thing. It said a constant over x to any power goes to what? Zero. That was important. We needed that. This becomes how much, folks? Everybody. Zero. How much does this become? Zero. Constant over infinity. Whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. It's going to zero. So what this says is this limit, notice how I'm going to stop writing the limit now. I've written limit till here. 5 minus 0 over 3 plus 0. That's 5 thirds. Not 1. 5 thirds. Now, is it coincidental? Is it coincidental that, uh, by the way, this works because you do 1 over x over 1 over x. Do you guys see what I'm talking about there? What I really did mathematically was this over that. Do you see it? 1 over x over 1 over x, and that distributed, and that basically divided every term by x. And that's the mathematical way you'd show that. Look at the first, look at the first uh, expression, the limit of 5x minus 2 over 3x plus 9. What's the leading term here? 5x is the leading term. What's the leading term here? What are the coefficients? Do you see that when I divide, <coughs> excuse me, when I divide by that x, I'm going to get 5 thirds. Everything else is going to go to 0. So the lead, those are polynomials. The leading term is all that really matters for us for that. Now, do you have to show it? Yeah, I'd like you to show it for right now. Okay? As you're going on, you know, later math classes, no problem. But, but show me that. Where are you getting the x from? It's not the common x here. You're actually only looking at the denominator. And what you're going to do is divide every